welcome to this week's episode of Tasty Dish. My name is Emily and welcome to my kitchen. So something I wanted to make for you guys this week to show you kind of how quick and easy and fun it can be is something I call a pocket bread. It's kind of like, not sponsored, hot pocket, but it is fresh, great ingredients, and I think they taste a lot better after you are done cooking them. Uh, also, when you microwave them to reheat them, they're phenomenal as well. So I, as a child, my mom used to make these every once in a while. It was kind of labor intensive for her, but for me, it's a lot easier, that's for sure. I like the fact that you can take them pretty much anywhere you need to go. You can eat them at your desk, or if you go for a walk during your lunch break, you can hit it up and then eat and walk at the same time. And you can put anything in them. If you want to do a breakfast one, absolutely do like a sausage, egg, cheese, or just a scrambled egg and cheese. and Anything, it, the sky's the limit when it comes to this kind of stuff. Uh, mainly, I think that's why I like it so much because it's such a versatile meal. You can have it for lunch, breakfast, dinner, doesn't matter. It's kind of the best food. So today I made actually three fillings for you. I made a um, vegetarian one that involves onions, tomato, and tomato paste, as well as eggplant, squash, yellow, and green. Um, the next one that I'm gonna be making for you is a cheeseburger one. So it's ground beef, um, tomato, onion, cheddar cheese, as well as crispy bacon, because honestly, who doesn't love bacon on their cheeseburger? Um, side note, uh, if you put bacon on your cheeseburger, you're amazing. But if you have a burger by itself with nothing on it, I'm sorry, we can't be friends. There is no such thing as a hamburger in my opinion. It always has to have cheese, and if it has cheese, it has to have bacon. That's just the way it goes. So the last one is my favorite. So I'm not really a ham and cheese kind of person, but this one I am. So this one has ham, cheese, sauerkraut, caraway seed, and a little bit of mayo, just to give you just a little bit of creaminess. And these are gonna last me and my husband probably two weeks. <laughs> um, I made the rolls by scratch, and we will show you how to do that in the next clip. Let's start with two tablespoons of dry active yeast, six tablespoons of melted butter, a fourth cup of sugar, and a teaspoon of kosher salt, two large eggs, and I currently have two cups of warm milk boiling on the stove to get to 110 degrees. That's your sweet spot for this recipe. You wanna be able to activate the yeast with the sugar and the milk, and that will help make your dough rise better. So we're gonna use the whisk attachment for our KitchenAid. And we're not gonna put this on higher than speed two because you don't want any liquid coming out of your mixing bowl. Now that everything is incorporated, we're gonna add six cups of sifted bread flour to your mixture. And we're gonna use the dough hook. We're gonna lock the head down, make sure it's secure. And don't put this on higher than two because you don't want any of the dry mix coming out either. All right, now that it is incorporated, I'm just gonna speed it up just a little bit to get the dough on the sides off. Okay, so we are gonna grab an extra bowl and we're gonna use the spray, pam, oil, whatever you'd like to use, butter, to line this bowl so that when the dough is rising, it doesn't get stuck. A few good shakes should be able to get it out into your bowl. You don't necessarily have to use your hands, although you're more than welcome to. All right, we're gonna go ahead and let this uh, rise covered for about an hour and a half, and it should be good to go. The nice part about these rolls are they taste amazing. 
So what I plan on doing is I plan on doing one with a butter wash on top, one with an egg wash, and then to let you kind of compare which one you like the best. I personally like the one with the egg wash. It gives it kind of a better sheen. The butter almost just browns it. It doesn't look, to me it doesn't look as appetizing as an egg wash. Um, the reason I did that is it's all personal preference. The butter really doesn't add any specific flavor and the egg doesn't add any flavor either. Um, and if you have a stand mixer, I would absolutely suggest using that. It is so much easier than using your hands to knead. Uh, my KitchenAid has been a member of our family for the last five years and I have to tell you that it's probably one of the best items in my kitchen that I use on a regular basis. Not only does it make dough, but you're going to see in just a few minutes how it actually grinds up beef. So I mentioned in my first video that I like to use quality ingredients. Uh, I like to use fresh ground beef. I know not everybody has the capabilities of doing it. But if you have a KitchenAid mixer, please, please, please go out and get a meat grinder. You're gonna notice this beautiful difference on the ground beef that you get at the store versus the ground beef that you get here. So what I do is I cut up the chuck, I get a chuck steak, excuse me, and then I'll cut it up and I will put it through the processor on my KitchenAid. And it just grinds the beef so well. And you have either a fine texture or a thick texture. We went with a fine texture today since we were going to be making pocket bread. So when I use that, it makes me feel better because I know where my meat's coming from, from my butcher. It makes me feel good because I'm giving it to my friends and my family, my husband, and I know where the food's coming from. Quality ingredients really make your meal. I cannot stress that anymore. Uh, I have a lot of friends who go and buy low quality food and they have drastic issues in their diets. I can't necessarily say we do. I mean, obviously, I haven't gotten this way from eating celery sticks. So I know good food. I know how to use it. You know, food and water is supposed to be your sustenance for life. I eat food and I drink water, mainly through my iced coffee. But still, I'm putting water in my system. You have to make sure that when you're making this food, you put love into it. I think that's the biggest thing that I have versus somebody who is just throwing together food and then tossing it in the refrigerator or doing that insane meal prep. Listen, if your meal prep consists of chicken, vegetables, and rice and that makes you happy, knock yourself out. My meal prep is a piece of pizza, maybe a beer, and some chips, usually. I'm kidding, that's not the truth. But I'm just saying, you guys have to pick the food that tastes good to you. Monitor it. Moderation is key, kids. So we're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna show you the rest of these pocket breads, and I hope you guys enjoy. This is amazing. I love this stuff, and I can't wait to share it with you. Alright, so now that I've got the ground beef, I'm going to put it in a hot skillet and I'm going to brown the meat until everything is the same color. Now that everything is the same color, I'm going to take it off the heat and add it to a bowl. All right, so I'm going to start with the hamburger pocket and I am cutting up one package of thinly sliced bacon. Uh, I would just use regular smoked bacon. Don't go for like a hickory apple or anything like that. It might taste weird. I'm going to dice up two vine ripened tomatoes. You can dice them however you would like. I like to have them a little bit larger in mine.
Now make sure that your knife is nice and sharp because otherwise it's going to kind of crush the tomato and you're going to be more at risk of cutting yourself. Alright, let's slice up one onion. I actually like to bring the first layer off just in case because sometimes it's got dirt and other stuff on it that just doesn't come off with washing. So I'm going to slice up one onion. Sorry about my cutting board. Kind of wants to be difficult. And we're going to put that on the side. Alright, so now that everything is done and sliced up, I've got the cheese ready to go. I'm using just regular cheddar cheese. I'm going to take the ball of dough. You can do it any size you like. If you want to do smaller ones, bigger ones, it just depends on the amount of dough that you're using. I'm using the dough that's about the size of my palm. And I'm going to kind of stretch this out a little bit so I can add a good portion of the stuffing to it. And it's just a matter of putting everything together. The hamburger meat, the tomato, the bacon, the onion and cheese. So now that the pocket bread is stuffed, what you want to do is stretch the dough together and you're going to pinch it together so that it can stay in a formed ball. Once you are done with all of the balls, you're going to let them rise for another half hour before you're ready to bake them. Alright, so we're going to use one pound of ham, and this was just from a ham that I've had you know, a couple days ago. So I'm just going to slice and dice and make it bite sized. Alright, so we're going to use one pound of Swiss cheese. You can slice, dice, and make bite sized. For both the ham and cheese, you can go to the deli counter and ask for quarter inch slices at about a pound each. And again, slice, dice, and make bite sized. As you can see, I also have sauerkraut on the screen. That is 24 ounces of sauerkraut that has been drained and squeezed, so there's no extra liquid. So this is about a half a cup of mayonnaise. You can use any kind of mayonnaise that you would like. I prefer the Hellman's. Alright, so let's go ahead and add the Swiss cheese to the ham, as well as the sauerkraut, half a cup of mayonnaise, and two tablespoons of caraway seed. If you don't like caraway seed, you can remove it from the ingredient list. But if you do, I promise this is going to be a good decision. All right, stir until everything is thoroughly mixed.
All right, so you're gonna punch down the dough that has been rising for the last hour and a half, and you're gonna make it however large you would like. This one I'm gonna make pretty much the size of a softball, considering the filling size is a little bit more than bite size. Then after you're done, you're going to pinch the sides together and make sure that everything is enclosed in your dough so nothing leaks out. Make sure it's kind of like a ball and then put it on the tray because after you're finished, you're gonna let it rise for another half hour. All right, so now I'm just taking the egg wash and I am going to put it over all of the dough now that it has risen for another half hour, and we're gonna put it in the oven at 350 degrees for about 20 to 30 minutes until golden brown. So this is the vegetable filling that we're going to make, and I'm using one large white onion, one vine ripened tomato, I'm gonna use two yellow squash, one green squash, and a half of an eggplant that will be used, uh, half of it sliced and diced. Okay, so in a large skillet, you're gonna go ahead and melt one stick of butter, and you're gonna add about two tablespoons of olive oil to this. I'm gonna melt everything down. And then we're gonna add three tablespoons of crushed garlic. Now once everything is mixed together and you can smell garlic, you're going to go ahead and add the yellow and green squash to your skillet and you're going to start cooking that until it gets soft. Now we're going to go ahead and add the eggplant. And once this is all cooked and soft and, and kind of translucent looking, you can pull it out of the pan. So now that the squash and eggplant are out, we're gonna add the tomato and onion. Even though those are kind of different cooking times, more or less, you just want the tomatoes to get nice and soft. And then you're gonna take it out of your skillet and add it to the bowl with the squash. I'm using a pretty hefty squeeze of tomato paste. I would say this is about two and a half to three, maybe even four tablespoons of tomato paste. And this is all just done by eye. Some people don't like the tomato paste in this. I prefer it because I think it tastes a lot better. And I am just going to add salt and pepper to taste. Uh, I personally love fresh pepper and I think it adds a very dynamic flavor to the dish.
And then we're just going to stir until everything is incorporated. All right, now that that is done, we're going to get the dough, punch it down, bring it in, and then start to form the balls for your vegetable mix. I am actually using a cheese with this as well. This is an Italian cheese, shredded, bag is fine. And it just adds a little bit more creaminess to the vegetable mixture. And scoop your filling into however much you want in there. And then pinch, form balls, and let rise for a half hour. And once that's done rising, you're going to bake them for 350 in about 20 minutes or until golden brown. So now we have the hamburger one that we're going to cut into so we can see what it looks like. Oh look at that. It looks like an actual hamburger. How cool is that? This is the ham and cheese one with the egg wash so it gives it a little bit more of a crisper crust. Oh so good. And this is the vegetable one. So this is actually one of the first times I'm making this and I think it turned out incredibly well. So I have finished everything for here today. I have done the cheeseburger kind of uh, pocket bread. I have the ham and cheese pocket bread and then the vegetable pocket bread. So I figured we'd do a taste, see how it for each one goes. So this is the hamburger one, let's see. Mmm. So good. Tomato, onion, cheddar, all melty into the cheeseburger meat. Mmm. And the bread tastes so good on it. It's still soft because this is the one that I used the butter uh, glaze for. So you can see it's kind of dull, kind of brown. This one's the ham and cheese sauerkraut caraway seed. And this one you can see has a little bit more sheen on it. This one's gonna be, oh, I'm so excited. This one's actually my favorite. Mmm. Oh my God. So the bread actually absorbs the mayo when it's cooking through and the caraway seed. So it really kind of brings in all the flavor and you keep getting the flavor through the chew. Mm. And the ham's really good, the cheese is melty and gooey. Oh yeah, definitely one of my favorites. So the last one is the vegetable one that had the squash, the tomato, the onion, and some Italian cheeses in there. So this one I also used the egg wash on. So this is very shiny, very delicious. So let's see how that goes. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Mm-hmm. It's like a vegetable pizza in your mouth. Like this is phenomenal. <laughs> if you like pizza and you like vegetables, this, this is your thing. This is really good. I'm really, really happy on how well this turned out. Um, I really actually want to take a second bite, but I won't because I want to talk to you guys a little bit more before my video ends. I want to thank you guys for watching today. This has been a journey, that's for sure. And I want to thank you for your continued support. So if you can, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. You can comment below. All of the recipes that I have are going to be in the description box, box below. So just make sure that you like, subscribe, comment, and hit the notification bell so you see when I post new videos. And that's gonna be every Tuesday. Guys, it's been a pleasure. I hope you enjoy this food as much as I do, and I'll talk to you guys next time.